Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas, a wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at OzarkFolkCenter.com. Hey everybody, this is Dave Smith. Welcome to our show. This week on Ozark Highlands Radio, we'll hear Willie Watson, who was discovered by Doc Watson busking on Doc's old corner in Boone, North Carolina. We'll also listen to some songs from 15-year-old Grace Stormont and hear folklorist Brooks Blevins finish the strange story of Connie Franklin, the man who attended his own murder trial. All of that and more this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Willie Watson cut his musical chops in the area around Ithaca, New York, a hotbed of old-time music that included bands like the Horseflies and the Highwood String Band. Also influenced by Bob Dylan, Neil Young, and Lead Belly, he was a member of the Old Crow Medicine Show before heading out on a solo career that has included appearances with the Be Good Tanyas, Dave Rollins, and Sean and Sarah Watkins. Here he is live at the Ozark Folk Center State Park.
Listening to it a lot and then just doing it, you know, and of course trying to emulate it at an early age. And really, like when I first started singing this kind of music, I was a, still, you know, a teenager. And, you know, I'm sure I sounded ridiculous. <laughs> um, but over the years, just doing it a lot and just like finding like the place in your throat or your chest or wherever it is or your stomach that, that you know, that, that, those, that tone of voice comes from. When I first started listening to this music, Lead Belly was one of my very first influences. Um, and my dad had a big record collection in the basement, it was kind of sitting on the shelves. And um, that it was in there, it was in his record collection. And he didn't have too much of that, like, you know, folk music or, you know, or, you know, a lot of even bluegrass. He had maybe a couple bluegrass records, you know, but not a lot. It was really like the standard stuff that a guy his age would have had growing up buying Rolling Stones records and, you know, America records. Bread was always down there, you know, Dan Fogelberg. And the stuff that you see in the dollar bins at every record store was, you know, was, was, was down there. And some, and some pretty good stuff, too. 
Um, Neil, he had all the Neil Young stuff and the Dylan stuff, and that was a big help to me. Um, but there was that Lead Belly record down there, and it was the one thing of, of that sort of vein, you know. And um, and I don't think I'd ever really gotten it out or maybe listened to it, but I looked at it a lot because it had a really cool cover. I liked the artwork on it too. And um, uh, and then Kurt Cobain was talking about him on Nirvana Unplugged on MTV, and he did this song. He's like, "This is this guy Lead Belly," and I was like, "Ah, that's the record in the basement. I'm going to get that out." <laughs> Sugar for sugar, but you get salt for salt. I'll give you sugar for sugar, baby. You get salt for salt. If you can't get along with me, it's your own damn fault. Sometimes I think that you're too sweet to die. Sometimes I think that you're too sweet to die Then another time I think you ought to be buried alive But at the same time, you know, I was also listening around, uh, well, uh, uh, to, to the local music scene around Ithaca, New York, in upstate New York, where I'm from. And uh, 
there was a lot of uh, fiddle music and banjos and string band music going on up there that, uh, you know, it was all over town. And, it was, and um, so I got to see that firsthand in like some pubs when I was like 15 and 16. So, yeah. That was Willie Watson, recorded live on stage at the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. After the break, we'll be heading down to the vault for a classic performance by ballad singer Almeda Riddle. Thank you. 
Every week about this time, I like to take a trip down into the extensive music vault that we keep here at the Ozark Folk Center. Let's go down there today and see what Mark's doing down in the vault. Mark, what's going on down here? Oh, Dave, I'm over here. Boy, I tell you what, I'm just listening through a lot of stuff. Mark, you little look a little misty-eyed today. What you been listening to? Well, actually, I've been listening to Miss Almeida Riddle. And uh, Dave, she was a ballad singer all her life, but she was discovered in 1952 by a folklorist named John Quincy Wolf and was recorded by Alan Lomax for the album Southern Frontiers. Yeah, I remember seeing uh, Almeida play at the Folk Center, or sing many times. She always sang unaccompanied, didn't she? Strictly a cappella ballads, and she knew hundreds and hundreds of them. Do you know that in, on Thanksgiving Day 1926, her home was struck by the tornado that hit Heber Springs, Arkansas, killed her husband and her infant child, and wounded Alameda and both her children so that they spent a year in the hospital. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Well, I'll bet that had a lot to do with the way that she sang over the years. She'd seen a lot of tragedy in her life. Let's listen to this recording of Alameda Riddle singing Amazing Grace. Let's do. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. Now, we're going to sing it just as our fathers and Mothers did in the old camp meeting. <clears throat> that saves a wretch like me. I once was lost, and now I'm found. I was blind, and now I see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Then grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear. The hour I first believed Through many a danger, toil, and snare I've already in the rotten shape. Yea, when this heart of flesh shall fail, and my mortal life here cease, then I'll possess within the veil. A life of joy and peace When we've, now everybody, been there ten thousand years Bright shining like the 
sun We've no less days to sing God's praise Than when we first begun Let's see how many knows this one. This one dropped off about 50 years ago. They quit singing this one. <clears throat> ten thousand times, ten thousand years, and the ages will roll on. We'll sing God's praise. Sing amazing grace, then sing the glad new song. Wow, Mark, that was that's a pretty heavy song, isn't it? It sure is, David. Just kind of shows the people that lived in this area and the strength. They knew some hard times, didn't they? That's true. Well, thanks a lot, Mark. That was really great. Fifteen-year-old Grace Stormont lives in Wilburn, Arkansas, and is homeschooled. She's fallen in love with folk, folk blues, and Appalachian music, and in three short years has learned to play the guitar, the bass, and the banjo. Here's Grace Stormont playing Little Maggie and doing a fine a cappella version of The Wind Across the Wild Moor. And he 
found Mary did But the child yet alive Clutched close to his dead mother's breast Now the old man in grief pined away And the babe to its mother went soon And no one they say has lived there to this day and the cottage has been left to ruin now the villagers point out the place where the ivy grows over the door saying there mary died once a fair village bride from the wind that blows across the wild moor from the wind that blows across the wild moor that was 15 year old grace stormont recorded live at the ozark folk center now let's hear some more songs from folk singer Willie Watson. A story about a man named John. He had long johns on. And he was long gone, folks. I never, I don't know, you know, it was getting there by the end with the, with Old Crow, um, as far as like the big light show and, and the way that the that I hear that the show has has gone, and um, you know, I think if they're happy doing doing that and that's like what is making those crowds happy too, then then man, that's the way it should be. Um, but I'm real happy I'm not there and doing doing exactly that. Um, I think, um, you know, I didn't know it at first. I didn't know what kind of um, shape my music was going to take when I left. It was pretty up in the air and it was pretty scary. Um, but, you know, the the solution seemed to be um, just the simplest thing you could think of, just singing these old songs. And it was, so it was what a relief it was, you know. And, um, and again, it was a little scary taking it out there because being on stage by myself, 
you know, was something I wasn't used to at all. And I had all these other guys to lean on up there. And, and um, it was like a party atmosphere on that stage, you know. It was comfortable, and, you know, I'm sure, we, you know, we're all a little, you know, comfortable with ourselves and our positions up there. And, and um, you know, it was real, you know, fraternal. Um, <laughs> so you know, how, you know how fraternal situations can get. Um, yeah, yeah. So it was, I had to relearn how to be on stage for sure. When a man has got the blues and feels discouraged And has nothing else but trouble all his life When he's just an honest man like any other Within a world of aggravating strife When he's sick and tired of life and takes to drinking Do not pass him by, don't meet him with a frown do not fail to lend your hand and try to help him Always lift him up and never knock him down If he stays out late at night because he's troubled Or because his home is not what it should be Have a smile for him wherever you might be will help him find the right way don't you see if he gambles when he's in the town or city tell him what he ought to do to gain the crown do not fail to lend your hand and show him pity always lift him up and never knock him down If he has no friends and everything's against him If he's failed in everything that he has tried Try to lift this load and help him bear his burden Let him know that you are walking by his side If he feels that all is lost and he has fallen Help to place this poor man's feet on solid ground and just remember, he's some mother's precious darling. Always lift him up and never knock him down. Thank you. was three great songs by folk and blues musician Willie Watson. After a short break, we'll hear author and folklorist Brooks Blevins with the last installment of the story of Connie Franklin.
Let's go back in the hills one more time to wrap up one of the strangest trials in American history. In our three-part series on music and murder in the Ozarks, we follow the alleged murder of a drifter named Connie Franklin in Stone County, Arkansas, and Connie's testimony at the trial for his own murder, not to mention the music that seemed to frame the story. Even after the trial, the soundtrack to the story of the Ghost of the Ozarks still had some life in it. In the gallery on the last day of the trial were two show businessmen from Chicago, Arthur McBride and Jack Shanfield. They had their sights set on making a film about the saga of Connie Franklin, but in the meantime, they planned to tour the middle of the country with a vaudeville-style review featuring the ghost himself, Connie Franklin, along with an old mountaineer named Crick Greenway and one of the lawyers from the trial. The hastily organized show debuted in Little Rock a couple of days later. As vaudeville reviews went, it was pretty tame. The ghost blew a few tunes on the French harp. The lawyer gave a talk on the people of the Ozarks, an old crick. Well, he was marched out on stage where he stood and said nothing so that the audience could get a close look at a real hill man. Connie Franklin had designs on a career as a music star, just like blue yodeler Jimmy Rogers, whom Connie claimed was his cousin. So the ghost of the Ozarks was disappointed when the show's producers hired a Jimmy Rogers knockoff to strum and sing a few songs as the review's main musical act. But it mattered little, for Connie's dreams of stardom were not to be. After only one show and a brief radio appearance in Little Rock, the producers and the ghost received a court injunction ordering them to turn over a percentage of the show's profits to Connie's estranged wife, who was living in poverty with three children in the Arkansas Delta. That was the end of the show. The ghost of the Ozarks disappeared from public view. He drifted back onto the hobo's trail. Three years later, he lay in a boarding house in eastern Arkansas, dead of a burst appendix. But his legacy would live on in song. Not in terribly memorable song, but no one's writing a song about you or me, so why judge? In the hills of Van Buren County, Arkansas, there lived a farmer named W.T. Kendrick. Mr. Kendrick was also a singing school teacher, one of those old-timey itinerant instructors in the do re Mees who taught folks how to read the shape notes in those cheap paperback gospel songbooks from Stamps Baxter. Mr. Kendrick loved writing songs, which he usually did by setting his own lyrics to the melodies of popular tunes. Inspired by the twists and turns of the Connie Franklin story as it played out in the newspapers and moved by the human suffering obscured by reporters' sensationalism, he wrote not one but two songs. He published both in a little booklet he titled Roving Thoughts. The longer of the two lamented the drifter's abandonment of his young family and his duplicity in promising to wed another. So beware when you may and with a stranger flee, wrote Kendrick, for you'd never know for sure what your name would be. The other song, titled simply Connie Franklin, he set to the melody of a popular song from the 20s called The Death of Floyd Collins, inspired by a real-life cave tragedy in Kentucky. I've never come across a recording of either song, so this may be the first. Here's Connie Franklin by W.T. Kendrick. Come all you fair young maidens and listen while I tell of that noted Connie Franklin of whom you all know well. He courted a fair damsel, Miss Tilly was her name. She was sweet sixteen and single, and he passed himself the same. He won her love while courting, and then proposed to wed. Because she learned to love him, she accepted him, she said. They started off to marry, she thought him true and kind, though he had not told the story of his wife and babes behind. While walking on together toward the parson's home, soon expecting to be married to be each other's own, a band of men o'ertook them, twas five and all she said. They seized and beaten Connie till she thought him to be dead. The meanest of all humans, twas two of this ring band, where they led me off from Connie 
both pulled me by the hand, led me out in the darkness, assaulted me to shame, then threatened they would kill me if I e'er told their name. They left me there so lonely, my life was all in dread, and a grieving over Connie, I thought him to be dead. But while I strode so lonely in search for father's home, I thought that in the judgment these men will meet their doom. That was the song Connie Franklin, sung by author, folklorist, and singer Brooks Blevins. Now let's go back to the stage at the Ozark Folk Center State Park and more from Willie Watson. Kind of. Yeah, and it's got that sort of, you know, more country sound, you know, a country blues sort of sound that, you know, it's not straight up Delta blues stuff with a slide or open tunings. You know, he can do that sort of stuff, but, you know, Blood Belly's got a lot of variety, you know. He plays a lot of different kind of songs, you know, and um, he can listen to a bunch of songs in a row. And it gets a little, you know, you want, you want something different, and he'll give that to you, you know, with different guitar styles and stuff. La 
lies that you told Now I lie on my bed I see your sweet face In the past I remember So if you ladies were blackbirds, if you ladies were thrushes, I'd lie there for hours in the cold, chilly marshes. If you ladies were squirrels. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole new world. Um, but I think at, at this point, I've I've got a handle on it. Like I've been working a lot, and this whole you know since the since the um, folk singer volume one came out, um, I've been working like like crazy out here on the road. So you know, like I was saying with you know singing and everything, just the more you do it. So. Thanks, folks. I got one more for you. You've been a great audience. Thanks for coming out. Yonder come Miss Rosie How in the world do you know Well, the news about her apron And the dress that she wore Umbrella on her shoulder A piece of paper in her hand when she's going to see the governor Time to loosen my man Let the midnight special Shine his light on me Let the midnight special Shine his little loving light on me Now when you get up in the morning When that big bell rings You go march it to the table at the same damn thing. Knives and forks are on the table. 
man ain't nothing in my pen. He say anything about it. Have trouble if the man let the midnight special shine its light on me. Well, let the midnight special shine its ever loving light on me. Well, jumping little Judy, she was a mighty fine gal. And Judy brought jumping. Houston, boys, you better walk right, and you better not stagger, and you better not fight. Sheriff Broxton will arrest you. And Kid Ed will take you down, and you can get your bottom dollar. Your penitentiary bound. Shine its light on me. Oh, let the midnight special shine its ever loving light on me. Let the midnight special shine its light on me. Oh, let the midnight special shine its ever loving light on on me. That's it for this week's show. For more information about what you've heard this week, as well as playlists for other shows, visit our website at ozarkhighlandsradio.com. Until next week, I'm Dave Smith. Bye, everybody. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from Arkansas State Parks, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. More information online at ArkansasStateParks.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.